safe practices. Remember, when you go outside, always wear your mask, all right? Always have your mask. Um, when you come back from places, don't forget to wash your hands. Buenos dias, niñas. Buenos dias, mama, papa. Buenos dias, tío, tía. Buenos dias, abuelo, abuela. Buenos dias, good morning. Good morning, girls, mommy, daddy, uncle, aunt, grandpa, grandma. Welcome to our second lesson in art. Um, we, we will most likely need your help, but I think these girls can do most of it. All right, so let's look back. I understand that some girls had a little bit of problems with their um their their work right let me just make sure i just make sure i screen share with you right right so let's go back to our let's go back sorry about that girls good so in our last lesson, we started the model of Trinidad and Tobago. And I found just for a fact, I wanted to let you know that Trinidad is part of the Andes mountain. Our landmass was attached to this. And this huge landform was part of ours. Bearing that in mind, if you look carefully, so we are a little, little dot. This is what we look like. So we are part of that mountain range, that, that relief, that land feature. Look at it. Look at how the, the mountains, you'll see like there's a ridge and there are little, little valleys in between and it continues right here. Okay? Let me see if I get my, my cursor, my laser pointer, right. So you will see this is very much similar to this very much similar to this all right and remember that because we need to use that fact in what we're doing in our last lesson we looked at drawing trinidad looking at the shapes so it was made up basically of a rectangle and we had three types of triangles we had a grande triangle pequeño and medio all right slightly up that way A lot of people will say, I can't do this. Remember girls, I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. Don't say you can't, you could, all right? So what I want you to do is to outline the shape of Trinidad. I want you to look carefully. The beautiful thing about this, you can always rewind. So I want you to look carefully. And now we are going around Trinidad, right? Look at the different peaks. Look at the different headlands, all right? Then there's a drop here. There's another drop here. There's another drop here. It curves inwards, then it goes outwards. Can't see this over this map here, this little thing here, but it goes around, goes up, belly in, right? It makes almost like, you could almost see like a face here, a little nose and a mouth hair, and a, probably a chin, right? And you're using that same thing to do your outline of Trinidad. Right. Now, some of you may have started, some of you didn't, some of you would have gotten a little bit of issue. So I just wanted to go over it with you. So firstly, I took a copy book page that was old, right? I took about 10 pages and I cut it up. I have my bowl of water and my glue, normal paper glue. I tear it up, tear it up as small as possible, and then I put it in a bowl of water. Now, when I put it in the bowl of water, I even tear it up even more because paper are really made up of fibers, fibers that come from wood, paper comes from wood. So you need to tear it up as small as possible. When you finish doing that, you've got to strain out the water and you'll get something looking like this, a pulp. Because with this, this is the body of what is going to make our model. Then you use normal paper glue, right? And add it to it and mix it up. 
it will be a little bit messy, your hand will be a bit sticky, but it's all in the process of making your pulp. Mm. Then the drawing that you have of Trinidad, you will start first by pasting your glue inside of the area of the map of Trinidad. So what you did in our last lesson, we outlined the circumference. So let, I wonder if we can go back to that. Right? We found the circumference, the distance, right? This is the distance around the Trinidad. And we made the shape from the rectangle and the triangles, okay? So this green line that you see in here, that's your perimeter. And we are gonna put glue in the area, all right? The glue in the area acts as an adhesive for the pulp. Remember the pulp we had up here? And the pulp, we also mix it with some glue here and we start pacing it down. Notice how my fingers are, right? You take your fingers and you tap it down, tap it down, tap it down. Now, our knowledge of Trinidad, we have to use, okay? So, on our, with our knowledge of Trinidad, that's, we look at the relief. The relief is what the land looks like. So if we look carefully at the land of Trinidad, you would see the Northern Range, which is a group of mountains at the top. Notice it has a main ridge at the top and then they have little cracks below. That's going to, you're going to use your fingers. You're going to pack more there. Then there's a flat area here. You see where my cursor is? That's the Karani Plains. So you're gonna make here be flat. Then you have the central range, which you're gonna pack again, right? Give it a little height. And then you're gonna do again the, the Riva Plains. And then you have the Southern Range. All right? Now, to begin with, we started with the Northern Range. This is what the Northern Range, a small peak of the Northern Range. And we are looking at the highest place in the Northern Range. The Northern Range is the highest group of mountains in Trinidad. Okay, you can see it here. And in the highest group of mountains, we have a special mountain called El Cerro de la Ripo. It's 940 meters. Just imagine that. One meter, if you open your hands out wide, that is one meter. However, this is 940 meters. It is our highest mountain in Trinidad. So when you are doing your model, you have to make sure that your northern range are your highest looking mountains, okay? So here I am, patting it down. So I patted the whole thing and then I'm using, look at how I pinched it to give me the shape of the mountains. I'm also pinching it this way as well because the mountains, the ridge is not only here, it is also going down here as well. All right. So here we have El Cerro de la Ripo. And it is, do you know that El Cerro de la Ripo is famous for the golden tree frog? It's, it's a, do you know too, it's also near extinction. So whenever you see this, you don't kill it because it is an endangered species now and it is found right here in Trinidad in El Cerro de la Ripo. So if one day you're going hiking, you will be very fortunate to see that. Make sure you look at it and you, you just enjoy it, right? Take pictures. Then we have next the central range. Now remember the northern range is the highest range. The central range is not as high and then you have the southern range. So you make sure that when you're packing it, you're packing it in heights, right? So this is your shortest height, this is a little taller, and this is your tallest. Bearing in mind that in this range here, right, more to this side here, you have El Cerro de la Ripo. Now, there are also high points in the central range, you know. Let me find it for you. 
in the central range, you have Mount Tamina. The highest point is 308 meters. And in Tamina, there are a lot of caves, bats. And I hear it, and you can go there. It's very exciting. A lot of people go out there, are a lot of hiking trails there. And you will see um, the, the oil birds. They are, all, they are found in these caves, all right? In Mount Tamina in central Trinidad. Next, right, we have the Trinity Hills, which is not as high as the other two, all right? So when you are building your model, it should look like this, all right? So you can clearly see your northern range is very high, your central range is a little bit shorter, and the southern hills, the southern range, it is not as high, all right? Now, when you're finished doing this, most likely it's going to be wet. I know the past few days it has been very wet and the sun has not been able to dry it out properly. But this is where Abuelo, Abuela, Tio, Tia, Mommy, Daddy comes in. You know, you could put it in the oven for about 15 minutes and then it's going to dry. Right? Good. So let's look at Mayo now. So this is what it's going to look like. And let me first hold it for you to see what it looks like. So this, I had to put it in the oven because I've had some wet, wet days. So if I were to rest it down like this for you to see, let me see if I can get this properly. Right, you can see clearly, right? That here, my Northern range is the higher one, the highest. Then I have my central and then I have my Southern range. Okay, so you can see my relief. Right, let's get now to our painting. So we want to paint our mountains, okay? Remember, when we are painting, always have ourselves dressed and ready for paint because you don't want to spoil your clothes. So you put on your apron, right? You put on your apron, then you get out your large paintbrush, remember for large areas, we always use a large paintbrush and to hold a paintbrush, thumb, point your finger, holds it like this, okay? You dip into it, right? Then you start painting. What's beautiful about papier-mâché is really paper with water. So you dip and you paint. Right? It is just like painting on paper. In fact, it is painting with paper with glue. Paper mixed with glue and you paint it like that. Right? You take your time and you paint it. Take your time and you paint it. Now this girls, we took, we took firstly our map of Trinidad, which was one dimensional, right? Meaning it was flat. And now we made it three dimensional. By packing it up like this with the mountains, it gave it relief. It is now not no longer flat. It is elevated, okay? And here we can see our mountains. I am now painting now. When you're painting, you should be going through your mind. Okay, where am I painting now? Right, this is the Karani Plains. I am painting here now, okay? Now I'm going to the central range. I'm painting the mountains on the central range, like that. I'm painting it. It takes a little bit of doing, but it's just like normal paint. It's just like you're painting on something that's a little raised. Right? It's raised up. And I'm painting in an up and down motion. Whichever way you're painting, whether it is left or right, you continue in a left to right motion. If you're painting up and down, you continue in an up and down motion. So there's consistency, right? Mm 
So there you go. So here I have finished my map of Trinidad and Tobago. And I want to show, I want to show the different mountain ranges because in one color here, it looks as if it is one level. So I want to make it look a little higher. So I'm going to put the higher areas in a little bit of a darker green, but I don't have dark green. So here's how we use our palette. So we have our palette. The first color I'm going to put in here is the green, which I already have, right? And I'm going to touch my blue. The blue, I'm going to touch it here. I'm going to mix it and it's going to give me a darker green. So my areas that are raised up, I'm just going to touch it because I want it to look darker. I want it also to show that these are my higher areas, right? These are my higher areas. If I need it to be, I still find that that blue did not do much justice. I'm just going to touch a little bit of black, not much. Just touch it because I don't want it to look black. I still want it to look green, but I want it to be a darker shade of green. All right. So I'm going to touch it again. There you go. I'm now seeing my darker shade of green. All right. So this is also girls. You will notice that it has notice how I pinched it. I pinched it where some of the mountains are going down. That's the different valleys we have, the Santa Cruz, the um, St. Anne's valleys, the Diego Martin. It's all going a little bit down. We have the main ridge, which is here, the continuation of the Andean Ridge. Remember I showed you the Andean? So it's continuing here, but we also have some mountains coming down here. Right, so I'm painting down here. Then I'm going to central, central, which is divided. And I'm just going to touch it up like that, right? And then I have my southern range with the Trinity Hills, right? So I'm going to touch it up like that. Good. Now we are finished. Lastly, we're going to paint the water. The water, we're going to do a wash, right? So let me just change my water here. Give me a minute. Whenever we are doing a wash, a wash means a lot of water and a little bit of paint. Again, I use my largest paint brush, a little bit of paint. You see, it just touches there. And well, for my wash, I'm going to do it left to right now. So I'm going to go across, left to right, right? So I'm creating my background. This is my background. So again, I'm painting it like this. Just touching it with paint, a lot of water. Water is the key, right? Oh, I added too much paint there. So therefore I'm not adding any more paint. What I'm going to do is keep on adding water now. No more paint, water. I'm just gonna work with my water now. Right? And I need to even it out because it don't want one side looking darker than the other, right? So I'm going to get that paint out from there and finish it on this page here, right? So with a wash, even if you might make a mistake and use too much at one time, that's okay. What you can do is just add water and spread it because the nature of what it is you want to do, what it is you want to do is you want to create a wash, all right? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this. Here's what I want you to do next for me. I want you, I want you to do a little drawing of a house, you, right? You can represent it either one dimensional, meaning you can draw yourself, right? Or you could have a little model with the same, you could use the, um, the paper mache pulp, or if you have plasticine, and I want you to place it, look at your map and place it, right? So I will do mine and I will place it here because I live up here in this valley here. I want you to use your map and find out where you live and put it there to locate where you are living. 
All right. When you submit it, I want you to tell me to where you're living. All right. So this ends our art class for today. Remember, safe practices. And also, if it gets a little difficult, always remember to say, I can do all things with Christ who strengthens me. And I know, I know that God, I love God. And God loves me. And I could love everybody. And is in this love, you will find strength to do anything that you have to do. Right? So, have fun. I look forward to seeing your work. Adios.